And we're live. Well, after a, a year and I think it's a year and a bit, we were, we finally get half our pies finally across again, Tom. So, what are you further ado? How, how are you doing tonight, Tom? I'm very well, thank you. I'm very well. Um, yes. Uh, um, yeah. How are you? I'm really good. We were just saying before we went live, I mean, since our last conversation, really, and I think it's a, a kind of a fascinating point to pick up on, really, because the back end of our last conversation, um, we were talking about the ceiling demons and about, you know, that sort of connection. And, and since then, I mean, this is just sort of anyone to point the way, they can go to your, your Twitter account and it'll give you, send you links to, there you were, writing review of them live with, um, in, in, yes. in a gig. So, I mean, so, like, tell me about that journey, man, because that's been an interesting sort of pathway since we last spoken. Yeah, it's been been lovely. Like, um, yeah, so I guess thinking thinking back then, obviously you sort of, um, uh, well, there was sort of mediations between um, outside your house and you and and what you do. And so we were talking around that and obviously Ceiling Demons um, having a kind of, you know, parallel connection with um, outside your house and Tim and Johnny and uh, working on bits and pieces with them. And um, yes, it's just... Uh, uh, one of the the blessings of um, internet connections and sort of uh, uh, and obviously geographical they're not too far away but you know we, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have met and yet like um, there's a lot of uh, uh, overlap in in where you know ideas where we we might have come from uh, and um, yes so I guess I'll be down in down in Durham um, uh, which outside your house I think were the headliners they're the headliners <laughs> I'm trying to think like a uh, Anyway, they did a really grand sat down, set down an empty shop, and um, yes, oh no, oh, Sin Demons would have been the headline stunner. Sorry, so that's that's where it would have been. Um, so yes, um, and uh, met them for the first time there, and uh, yeah, that was a, a great, great sort of uh, sweaty evening, and um, yes, and uh, you really got the the effect of their music live there, and um, yeah, and then there's been been sort of um, sort of casual communication since, and. Um, They've been working so hard on various bits and pieces. Um, I really like the Belly of the Hopeless EP. Um, it's, uh, I guess, like, I, I, you know, I only know them sort of over the last little while, but like um, from their more sort of, uh, you know, there's, there's some stuff that they do which is more um, uh, conventional in terms of sort of uh, kind of I I, I, I used in, in in the the article I wrote about them I used the word sort of anthemic and it is sort of the, those kind of big numbers I guess those big songs which are sort of uh, about a big chorus and things like that which is great in in one respect but uh, the stuff that gets to me is um, that recent stuff they've been doing with the belly of the H hopeless and things like that where it's a little more um, uh, skewed and uh, sort of uh, strange, you know. Um, and I think that's, uh, yeah, that's really good. Do you like, you've heard that EP, I guess. Oh, uh, completely. And I, I think one of the things I think I, I've always think has been a strength, particularly of the twins and the, the whole project, the Ceiling Demons, has been their ability to reach out, as you just said, and, and, and not be afraid to explore any new areas of creativity. And, and so when I started hearing, I mean, it's one of the things you hear when you, I'm privileged enough to do a lot of, you know, know them quite well. So I get to hear sort of tracks they send me and, and I, it's, none of it really surprised me. And I, I think it's one of the strengths of, like you said, of, the, of them particularly. And I think this plays into, it's one of the things I love about, we were, again, we, we were speaking about last time we, had a, we were talking on this podcast, we, we we're saying that there's quite a flourishing sort of scene you already mentioned there you know you know outside your house and the ceiling demons and stuff and, sure. and again that's led to other projects and stuff and I, I think this is what you're starting to see as emerge and of this people are starting to connect and collaborate and take their ideas and, and push them and and everyone's not there's, there's, there seems to be like you, you can speak from this more been on that side of it but there doesn't seem to be and i've found this on my side doing the artwork and stuff but there doesn't seem to be any dominant voices it's kind of like oh look, there's an idea great work with it and then they come back to you and there's the, but then on the other hand there's not that dishonesty they're very there's a very honesty about it. like they don't like something they're saying no 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 which is really good because i can you, you know what it's like you get into many creative circles and you can get into this echo chamber of yes men and they just tell you everything you're doing is either great or shit <laughs> so it's good to sometimes yeah. have that real honesty I think so, and um, yeah, that's that's something I've thought about a lot actually recently. This and and yeah, so so this this uh, and thinking actually in terms of like it parallels with the sort of political conversations that go around as well. This idea of sort of shame in terms of conversation, so that you're if you if you even broke uh, you know you you try and 
um, you, you try and express something that might not be black and white and might be sort of like, uh, you know, maybe you're working things out, maybe someone else is as well. But the idea that um, uh, the, the, it's very tragic when there's such a polarization that uh, there can be no sort of shared middle ground. And even if, you know, there's not an agreement, at least there's a kind of discussion around it. And, um, you know, this is where sort of art and creativity like that sort of teaches us how to speak to one another in other ways, you know, and it's like, um, yes, uh, I think I think at the, the essence is that these are, are very warm and, and kind people. And um, so when they do get in a room or when they sort of like, uh, I mean, I've only seen it in the live thing, but I can presume, you know, it carries on from what conversation, you know, what people have said and everything. Um, yeah, the, the, there's, they want to achieve something positively with the people that they're they're working with, and it's sort of like, uh, and Johnny and Tim are like that as well. You know, it's like, um, uh, yeah, it's it's about you know making something good, and 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 you know obviously we'll trip and all those things along the way, but there's not the um, the cynicism underlying it that suggests that anyone's trying to do anything other than that, um, which is why I think. Um, particularly, yeah, particularly with the ceiling demons, this sort of ratio of of work, to, you know, work to time, and sort of like their effort on various things, isn't um, uh, what's the word uh, tripped up by any kind of false behaviours. You know, it's just um, uh, you know they can just get on with it. You know, because they've they're they're in tune with uh, yeah a, a way of being kind to people. Yeah, I th I think you're absolutely stumped. You know. You stumbled upon not saying. I think you did, the, the essence of what you just spoken about there, Tom, is, is is completely one of the. I like to do this at times. I don't think it's one of the things that many creative people don't. We always on this push forward and advance and advance. And I think at times at times it's good just to stop and meditate and have a look about what what's been achieved or just milestones. Like like to, you know, like this week, I was thinking, okay, I've got Tom coming. Let's think about what's gone on in the last, you know, sort of like the period of time since but since we've spoken. Like, yeah, and, and and I think what you just what you just. You, you know you spoke upon is, is really relevant because we do live in i think since the last conversation we, we, we spoke upon we, there is much more of a wider it seems to be divisive element in society you know that's coming from the media it's coming from everywhere there seems to be this great division yeah. and okay we can i mean we can sit here and bang our heads on the wall about how you know and ultimately we're going to come to the point okay well we can only ever change ourselves so there's no point ultimately trying to bang our heads against the wall that's too much but the realization that even at the end of that quandary is you're still left with okay how how do we as creatives get the people together how do we get people to go okay look you may violently disagree and you might be you know in my ideology or another ideology but we've got to find a way as a human species to find that for want of a better word, middle ground. And that's what you said you were speaking upon. I think you're right about the scene dims. I think that's what plays with them and what I see at the moment is because it's relevant now. We need people to, just to step up and speak the truth. And where, where it comes from the demons' point of view is that they're, they're grounded in, you know, the, the whole beginning of their band is started from that point of like, well, well we think, so yeah. they, why, why bullshit when you've seen that? So I, I just think it's very, one of these questions that us creative have to really wrestle with because we do see this dissonance around in our society between those who are completely polarized on one side and those on the other side. And there seems to be a masses of, of resources and time and energy spent to keep that divide and make it bigger. And we are left in the creative now in that middle pit, trying to left to, to create content that hopefully can unite species. So I think that's one of the questions that you, whether you didn't <laughs> intentionally sort of mean to stumble upon that, but it's exactly I think one of the the, 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 the white elephants that us creators really I feel aren't discussing enough and need to discuss more about what can we do to find a way between the people who have got completely polarized opinions and give them something that they can in, i don't know for want of a better word come together on yes it's uh yes um yeah it's those tools because i think um obviously we've had the luxury of of technology getting cheaper and and things like that so therefore there's a kind of um uh, in terms of making various bits and pieces um there's an accessibility that that hasn't been there for people before, which is great. But of course, there is always um, uh, ways that that needs to be equalised. There's still, sadly, you know, sort of, uh, you know, there's still a classist, you know, thing happening there where you know certain people can get hold of things and others can't. And that's a shame. But that's improved. Well, that's improving. Or, or you know, people with uh, less resources are able to get more, which is good. Um, so yeah, and we're creating, you know 
mean, we see things in Newcastle. We've got wonderful places like the Newbridge Project and um, Empty Shop in Durham and uh, the old police house over in Gateshead. And it's like, uh, so we're getting sort of places where they becomes hubs for people to, you know, engage and put things on. So that's great. But then, of course, uh, once you've got people in the room and, and also, I, I guess, not letting that become um quickly uh what's the word um things can quickly take on an identity which then refuses other identities it's like a way of sort of keeping them progressive to to various viewpoints um and yes uh, and and conversation um so i guess uh, I, I can think of it in terms of the physical terms um uh, i guess with what you're doing and everything in terms of the the, the online sort of network of things is that um, it's a, a very different thing to maybe try well I say maybe very different but um, uh, a different language of how to um, create that middle conversation that sort of like right I don't agree with you so much on this bit when you don't agree here but can we achieve some level of harmony in the middle um, sometimes screens and things like that can sad sadly sometimes uh, create a, a false sense of disconnection Oh, I totally, Tom, and I think this is one of the things that, I mean, whenever people talk about, um, you know, the current, the current way, you know, they look at the internet, I always think a lot of this is just personal, they're, they're, look, they're almost projecting what they think of themselves, because the, when you boil it down to it, all technology is, new, is, is a neutral, it's what people do with it, and yeah. that's what I love, what I love about this, this tool at the moment, and, I, and I, that's, that's what I love about this, where we are in right now in history, is that, yeah, I, I do think right now that we, we've got this almost a, we've got a, 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 a technology and an explosion of technology that none of us, not one individual can kind of hold it all down. And, and it's it's kind of bubbling up in front of us all the time from different angles. And none of us are really aware what's going on. But all we're finding is that when we do find tools like Twitter and Facebook, great. We're all like kids in the playground and like, you know, the bit, who's got the loudest voice, who can shout the loudest, who's got the biggest stick gets the most, you know, and, and, yeah. but that's just an evolution. I think we probably, if you'd gone back a hundred years ago, you would have seen the same when the film came oh, out. Yes. And, yeah. and I think you would have, you seen that throughout more well, we know we, you've seen that throughout the, the history of literature you know it's always been that kind of you know the, the, the people who are innovators on the edge of it and then it gets corrupted and then it all kind of balances out and we find a way but what we are finding Tom and I think this is the encouraging thing about what we're seeing and that's why I use it very specific words that there seems to be a a a paradigm pushed out to us that's given to us with division but what i love about the internet is very is all the the tools that we have around us they're breaking down these barriers to the point when we're all realizing hey will it we're all actually like you just said 98 99 percent we all agree on it we're all kind of, there may be little differences on the edges but equally and that's what i love about the age we live in but it's we've got that most powerful tool but it's equally how do we get that so it doesn't just become as you you quite rightly alluding to where it just becomes one big echo chamber and when it's like who's got the biggest voice and that's where it's going to always fall down to the, as you as we know the creative people and the people who the outsiders who think about these things and maybe like us are in these conversations now that most people don't even think about but i think are really relevant because we've got to find some way of resting it back because there is going to be no there is no, I mean, this, this universe is chaotic and the idea that there's going to be some control is going to come in the world. Okay, well, now I'm going to sort it out. Now children, and it's not going to happen. It's going to be left no, to individuals. It's, it's, it so it's going to left me to the creative people, I think, to lead the way, as it always has been, the writers, the artists, the musicians. And I think it's, it's us that are kind of understand this technology, but it's what, it's what we do with it. And that, that's, that's the important thing, because we've got to override this echo chamber I'm in my corner, I'm in my corner. And, and like I said, that's what the, that was the beauty of art. We were supposed to come together and go, well, okay, we can all appreciate a, a Michael Di and a D'Angelo. We can all appreciate a Van Gogh. We can all understand the beauty that went into a, a Beethoven piece of work. That's the, that's the beauty of being creative and artistic, as I see it. Yeah, I think like, um, yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's, it, it, so, uh, yeah, as you say, like, so it's the, it's the, the uh, partly an awareness of the content that you're listening to and an awareness of like uh, listening to yourself before you know and what you offer because um, as you say it, 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 I think it does mirror um, other media and other forms of kind of um, you know uh, social powers and all the rest of it that have gone before 
I think you know you see that sort of um, it, well, you see you in in you know things like Twitter. In fact, you see you see reflective capitalism on those you know the, the, th throughout that 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 me those mediums. So um, the the thing is 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 to to try and yeah, to, I guess it, it starts with the philosophy and sort of maybe um, some primary values of of the the you know the conversations and then. If there are more of the the conversations that you know um, listen to one another and engage with one another, as opposed to you know um, I own this, therefore this means I'm better or whatever. You know, it's like um, then um, then you know hopefully we'll go in that direction. And I certainly feel that uh, you know producing um, producing uh, works of expression. Um, that are uh, thoughtful and uh, are honest to your life, whether they're, you know, corrupted in some way that you don't understand or don't know, at least if you share them, then that's the starting point for a conversation and then improvement and et cetera. Um, so it, it makes me think of another point in that sort of like I saw someone um, tweeting the other day, sort of like the comments have overtaken the article. And it's that that's something that concerns me sort of like uh, in that's, if yeah, if there's if there's more people that, that take the time to, to look at themselves, work on their stuff, and then put it out, um, and and exchange over that, I think there's there's more possibility in that than the sort of you know left right jabs of sort of like reflex for you know I mean obviously there's a place place for all these things but like uh, it's just. Um, yeah, I worry that uh, yeah, it's, it's it's this facts conversation that's coming in as well, you know. So so, um, but yeah, uh, for me, I I I yeah, I need to improve to to work to work, you know. That the, the, the there should be more, you know, more done behind the scenes first. Uh, how I'm working at the minute, anyway. It's sort of like uh, um, I feel like I've been better at that in the past, and I need to need to get back there. I, I I totally agree, Tom, and I, I think this is one of the I I I'm I, going back to we, we, we're in days where I'm starting to see this more reflected more and more and more is that people are becoming more aware of the expediency of that currency you just talked about that time of taking some time out going not just being all out out front all the time and you know just putting your life completely on display but like like we know yeah. we're creative people and you know particularly when you I mean again I don't want to linger too far you know, wander too far away from the central point of this start where we came from but you, you're writing articles now when you're a writer you, you can't do this in public now it's the same when I'm a, I'm a painter I can go out and put my canvases out and yeah great and people love it and I'm sure if you wrote down and you were sitting in the middle of you know Newcastle Town Centre and you're writing prose people would be like oh or they just think you're some mad guy, but but but, but in essence, it's that privacy we need, and I think this is what you're starting to see now that this currency of having to put the the old one of putting ten thousand hours in, learning to do your things, and and then I think what this is what I'm saying more and more and more with with, with the which is never a bad thing. I I I, I would have to say from the start, I think it's. I'd rather live in a world where I've got a million news sources than, than it was back when I was, you know, 20 years ago where there was four. I think it's, I think it's always better. And that does bring its own absolute whirlwind of confusion and, and chaos because you then you're left as an adult to go, okay, what do I know? And then like you said, we can easily fall into echo chambers and you're just listening to everything that you want to hear. And yeah. this is where it falls always ultimately down to the individual we've all got to make our own yeah. uh, you know our own things up but what i'm trying to say beyond what the, we can all do as an individual i think the the essence you're speaking upon and i think this is where where it, where it is important that we we can do is we have got this ability that you know we, we are starting to see you know that these, these resources out and we are starting to see the ability that you know that having time spent and see and what will happen and this is what i'm gonna say i i don't know i don't know how you feel about this but i just think we're at this however you feel about things people are hungry for things that, like you said and i think you hit the nail right there when you said thoughtful and honest 
Now, I, I think this is, this is what I'm saying. To be thoughtful and honest means you've got to go away and go to Tyson. Back to what I'm saying. You've got to go away and learn your craft. You've got to go away and learn to write in private. And you've got to learn to weigh in and do things. And like like the next Ronnie Chelsea album, there's going to be a lot of that. This is going to be people from the outside go, whoa, 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 that's not. And you're like, no, no, that's all part of the creative process. Me, me sitting around, I like, I, for instance, and I know it sort of bleeds into another thing, but a perfect example of what I'm trying to talk about, which I think is why I love, love where we live in the times that you can put these ideas ideas out because it ties in what we're saying about putting the effort and the work in was that one i think you put it out in 2011 about you making the album and there was day by day diary and you got little oh, yes, things yeah, yeah. and it was perfect because someone from the outside going oh as they do as a, as a general narrative oh well creative people you're a bunch of lazy artists you and you think do you know where that's every step along that way is, yeah. is a battle because you, you, you're balancing between them you know do you meditate do you, do you take time off and then you procrastinate and, and that becomes your part of your 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 your, your warrior your, your, the thing you're fighting or do you just go out and produce and produce and produce and see the point you think wait am i, am I, am I just giving a power to every thought that arises and what you're just spoke upon that's what i'm saying that thoughtful and honest thing and the time spent on it i think is something that's really i think is going to be the Growing, for want of a better word, name of the next few years, because I think this is ultimately that is what the power is. And this is it's the power of what we talked about. It's that power of nurturing that creativity inside inside someone, because ultimately it is come down to every individual voice is worth having because it gives a reflection of this crazy thing we call life. Yeah, it's yes. Yeah, it's. Um, uh, yeah. So, yeah, because because. Yeah, to, to, <laughs> there's so many things like so. Um, First of all, like just as it's, it's tangential, but I just want to quickly, quickly mention Leonard as he sadly passed this uh, last little while. Um, but it does tie in in the sense that um, I had luxury. I've, I've, I can't find them again now, but I, I, they definitely exist. Um, they were on the net like a, a while ago. Um, but basically, forty the forty odd pages of his workout notes for Alexandra leaving lyrics, and um, and. It started from I've forgotten who the poem was by originally. It's gonna be off. It's like um, anyway. Uh, so it, it's it's taken from an, a pre-existing poem. So it, he sort of started out with his notes there, and then you followed through these forty pages, and he went off in you know peculiar sort of areas. Um, but then right right back round, and to the the fortieth and then the the final version, it, the lyrics. Pretty much resembled the <laughs> the original poem, you know. Like if you put them side by side, you'd think, "Ah, oh, he's just taken a word there," you know. But you know, once you once you see this this actually this set of working notes, you know, it took him all this kind of you know understanding and discovery of the language to get back round to re recognizing to hold true. This is actually what it needed to be. So this is the kind of thing that sort of like. Now we will see the end result there, and um, uh, you know this is the problem with things like likes and things like the you know favorites and all this kind of thing. Someone will you know add a few of those once the thing is produced. So the the, the final item is being um, given a kind of currency, um, you know, which you know okay, fine, the appreciation of the final act, but it's sort of like all that stuff that's gone before it. Um, isn't uh isn't recognizable to you know you know the the, the, the i guess to, to, to someone new to to working in this way um won't recognize that all that work's gone in in the same way that perhaps if you watch a tv show and the credits aren't at the end of the show um then you don't know what's gone into making making the show so i think i agree with you that i think it is definitely the answer to show people or to have people doing these things and to to have uh, private victories as well as you know public ones um but the the where we are and well i think the, the problem with the way things are um on mass shown at the moment is that the end product is everything um in 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 popular uh, in popular contexts um obviously you get people like robert pollard from oh guided by voices and stuff like that who pretty much just uh, hits record <laughs> Wax a track out, it's you know just leaves the red dot running basically and just you know keeps right. I mean, and that shows you know that shows us something else. And there's a different sort of set of truths that are sort of given that way. But then there are other people that you know spend ten years working on that craft, 
and getting you know the, exactly something exactly how they want it. Either way, you've got to know. I think it's important to know what you're trying to do and what you know best sort of you know um, what be best techniques have been used and what can be used to sort of you know help you help you make it. And um, yeah, so I guess encouraging that value of sort of you know um, constantly looking at you know uh, it research researching uh, people that do things well. Uh, it's exactly what's gone into those things. You know that's that should be part of part of the conversation. I think. Uh, yeah, completely. And I, I think, like you said, and I think this is the element I'm talking about because I think having some knowledge about how certain people do things is is great. But and this is the other one. It's, it's like all this. It's one of the things about being a creative person. And it, it really is like almost like being a samurai warrior. I mean, you're always tiptoeing fine lines between of like. I'll give you a perfect example. Like then, I mean, you can immerse yourself uh, say you're a musician or an artist or a writer i mean it's one of the things about being a writer it's one of the things again go back to our breton days i mean you can you know immerse yourself in one right and you're like wow i love everything and you just want to immerse yourself immerse yourself and then you'll find yourself writing exactly like he does and it's not yeah. you're doing it consciously you're like oh shit now i sound like borges <laughs> yes. or yeah. i'm now giving out bill hicks lines i don't even want to do it but i'm doing it and it's you know my music sounds like so it's, 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 like I say, it's always this discipline of like, okay, I want to know how things are done, but I don't want to go too far down the line. Yes. And equally, but I think it's always important. This is one of the things I think we, we I think we're seeing a shift in the paradigm because I think everything's always been kept. You can sort of argue through history. All these craft skills, all the all the creative skills, have always been been kept between high, you know, class door, you know, behind closed doors. For instance, the script writer, you know, back in the you know the who was writing the manuscripts, you know, and he was, the, you know, oh, he, he a little right little room, and it's his magical skill. Same with the alchemist. Same with the guy who's making blacksmiths. You know, they, these were special skills. And then light comes along, and we're like, oh, then a the typewriter comes along, and all these things come along to where it's like, oh, actually. And I think this, we, we need these skills to be enlightened. As I said before, it's great. But the, the person who's seeing them, as much as they need to do it, it's kind of like, I see it sometimes, it's, it's almost a bit like when you go into, um, I, I'm an artist, when I see a range of colors, you know, I, it, it's knowing what, what, what in that moment I want to play with, or do you know yeah. what I mean? And, and that's what I think is, is what we, uh, the process of what you're doing, of, of giving some of the, you know, almost like behind the curtain scenes, what we're doing, it gives people, I think, if nothing else, not, not a, not a, don't go follow me and do everything I do, but it gives you an insight to be like, hey, find your own path. But equally, no, I can guarantee anything you may do that makes you feel creative to another creative person be like, oh, okay, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a surprise to us because it's, it's, it's kind of like, I always sort of feel every, every path I go down, I mean, we've all been down there. I mean, I've, I've, I've been through times when I'm just like, literally, it's that battle of resistance. I mean, it's when you, you just always time like, oh, okay, I'd rather watch all the South Parks. I'll watch, now I'll watch The Wire back to back, anything to do. And, and in element, some of it is, is quite, it is part of the process because you need to soak up all that kind of crap and then it yeah. all, it's, bursts it's, out. It's, yeah, G giving and receiving of yeah, so sort of like uh, a season to take in and a season to to give out sort of thing, um, and it 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 yeah, it is. It, I, I've I've rarely met anyone that can sort of um, work in. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm sure it's possible, but like in a purely sort of consistent sort of you know um, input output sort of even sort of line of of days. You know, it's sort of like this. It just doesn't seem to to usually work like that. But um, again, going back to Conan, so like you turn up nine to five to try to get it done um, is a, you know, um, then then you're giving yourself the opportunity for it to happen. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah, so uh, you mentioned like, um, so uh, yeah, different paths and, um, uh, sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm lost him. Yeah, it's like, um, uh, yeah, uh, in terms of, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I was thinking, um, like actors, I guess, prepare to sort of um, uh, correctly articulate something that they, so a co there's a copy, or not copy, like um, if they want to, to work on a character or something like that, then there are sort of um, uh, practices that go into learning um, the idiosyncrasies, the deliveries, the the different variations that then choosing the one variation that they do want to keep and all that kind of stuff. 
And I guess it's that kind of um, a control that sort of um, uh, needs to be part of it. So, um, you know, I'm dreadful at this, and it's something that I certainly hope to add to, to my life as I go along, is, um, uh, yeah, sort of learning, learning to control in various ways, like um, control thought, um, control, um, yeah, uh, expression you know uh, so so when those so when as, as you're learning and building into your muscles and sort of all that kind of thing when you do come to those moments of sort of needing instinct to kick in more those uh, practices prepare you to go the right way when you're you know you're you're there um, because that's the thing and again talking about this sort of comment online sort of thing it's um, it's not an honest interaction because often the muscles aren't prepared for the the instinct that is needed like it's it takes very talented and um prepared individual in a what's the word a, a debate or in you know to to draw upon the right bits of information at the right time they like a person might know those things but they might not put them forward at the right time if their muscles are loose and all the rest of it likewise if you um hurry in making a song or hurry in and you haven't you know got a got a really clear sense of of everything at your disposal then you're going to make a poorer uh, expression you know perhaps you know so um it's it's it really is everything ties into everything and um but yes people need to be i i need to be shown that uh, you need to show other people yeah it's it's like um uh it, it's it's not taught um you know it's not uh these things i have not learnt from the classroom you know so and there needs to be other people uh showing showing these things yeah you do tell me i think i think you, you, you've, you've hit you know something very quite i think one of, one of the key elements of 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 what you've spoken upon is is i think many people when they're they're, they're setting out on any any creative sort of process down the line. They, they always come upon, upon this, this stumbling block of like, like you just said about the, oh, I've got to get to an end process. And then you can go either way. And I think this is one of the things, like you say, one of the things that when, you, when, you're, when you're looking, if you're scared of the end objective, like you're, you're kind of like, which a lot of creative people are, we, we can tend to be very elusive, re, you know, re, reclusive people. We're kind of sure. like... We don't want to put stuff out there and then you sit and think okay the end objective of, of making this track is to put it out there which then can bring all the things that i may in my own mind or whatever conceive for see that i don't like so what happens is you're in that that moment you like you said you start all these thoughts don't come up come up and you go oh i don't know i'll follow that thought i follow that thought i follow that thought and you think you're being really creative and one of the things i found personally in my own you know thing and for want of a better word is meditation because one mm -hmm. of the things when you do that whole sitting just trying to almost concentrate on your own breath you suddenly you suddenly realize that it's not it's not a, an easy process it's a long process but you, you start to come to this realization that you can these thoughts just do bubble up and they do bubble up and you, and, and any emotions just bubble up and if you can just put them down then you can be i i personally found i can be far more creative now okay i'm not saying everybody's got the yeah. time to sit around and you know in a, in a room going you know in peace and quiet because that's a, a privilege not not many people have like like if you're in the middle of uh camden town you haven't got the ability to sit down in, in peace and quiet in the highlands and get that kind of thing but everybody can go for a walk like everybody can get into that almost zone flow state by yeah. doing like you said exercise and stuff like which is again these are the things that aren't taught at school nobody taught me at school that if i went for a walk i could be more creative but they yeah. should be these are part of the, of the processes what we're speaking upon but also the power of framing sort of like emotions like that as well i think as you, you mentioned sort of yeah um and being able to sort of take the emotion put it in a, a sort of third person space and sort of qualify it from afar is is such a i mean if i'd have had that earlier in my life that would have you know helped substantially I, i've got it a little bit now hopefully i'll get it more as i go along but it's like uh but just that introduction to that idea a meditation as you say I, I i sort of like um a ted talk of like um i've forgotten the guy's name some maybe fortune they had like a kind of grand surname i forgot like a valiant sort of surname but um uh Anyway, he talked about the, the power of listening to three minutes of silence uh, at the beginning of each day or whatever. And like, uh, I, I, I do that at the moment. 
and sort of obviously it's not complete science as you say it depends where you are but you can get close to it um, and just get that kind of default sort of and try and listen to things that are further and nearer just try and exercise your ears around that silent space first and um, yeah it, it just it just gets you used to sort of relationships of, of ideas and everything um, the, the problem is is sometimes you you go into trying to work on something thinking that you you have control of the vehicle that you are taking it in the right direction but there there will be pre-existing prejudices there will be etc etc sort of you know whereas if you you do an exercise like that or something and I think it's from it's some kind of meditation again where basically it's sort of the idea you're sat, sat down and sort of think right um, uh, are you happy with where you are right now if you want to move, what's why do you want to move? <laughs> what's what provokes you to do that next action? You know, sort of if or are you are you happy? If you're not, change it. Are you happy now? You know, and it's sort of like. Um, but again, it's these these muscles can get as sloppy as like uh, if you don't go running or whatever, and you want to be a runner or all these things. So it it is, um, yeah. It's but basically, I guess the point is it's it's uh, it shouldn't. Well, it isn't easy, and. Um, and you need to, yeah, this needs constant attention. Um, yeah, I say this as, uh, what's the word? Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> sort of, um, but, you know, it's like, uh, but I know this is right, though, because at periods when I've been better at it, it's it, things are better, you know, and, um, yeah, uh, it works. It does work. Well, I think we, 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 we're speaking upon something here that, again, anybody listening to this conversation, and you know, would be, would be, it's a very perfect example of it, that there is no set rule to being creative, of the creative thing. If someone could put it in a bottle and say, there you go, take that and you'll be creative and you'll be able to be the next Leonard Cohen or whatever creative path you want to go down. Man, it's not – the whole point of it is – and this is the real why, why I suppose it can never be taught. I suppose it's why that you, you, it's a very difficult process to sit anybody in, and teach them it because there's – it is this whole complete freedom. I mean, you you just given another perfect example. We, we were quite both of us just riffing about you know the, the the beauty of sitting in peace and quiet and having that meditation, catching your breath. And now mm. you know, if I was to say to you, well, okay, if I was to speak to you in February, where are you going to be, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll need like earplugs or something like that. Uh, but the point yeah. I'm making is, Tom, this, yeah. this is all part of the creative. This, this, this is the point. When you're a creative person, see, to me, when you say that, that, that none of this surprises me. The, the only thing that surprises me of any creative person is that they don't surprise me, if you can understand what I'm saying. Because it's like, yes. we, we'd yeah. love to take, the, we'd love to take, that's the point. The more you are creative, the more you fall into this, 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 this you almost go with that flow state, you, you will end up, you know, you're one minute you'll be sat up in, you know, like you say, in Newcastle, and four months later you'll be in the middle of Camden Town, and then, you know, I, I don't know, I could talk to you in a year's time, and you could be over in Bangkok having a, a bar open. This is the point of the, the free, this is one of the, the joys, of, I think, the beauty of being a, a completely free creative person. We've got that life. The guy in the suit doesn't have that ability because he's got a mortgage, kids, and all that crap. And that's one of the things I think why people who aren't in that, who the people who sit in offices, they go, oh, I'd love to be a creative person. I'd love to be a rock star. I'd love to be that because they, that's what they love about what we do. We've got that freedom. I think, yeah, it's like, but it's, I think, yeah, <laughs> so I think about the idea of the guy in the suit. It's like, um, I think, you know, no, n nobody is without the capacity of creativity and it's sort of like mm. i think what's sad is that it's um as things as time goes along f from from what i've yeah what i've experienced is that there of course there are responsibilities and there are um but more than more than the responsibility it's not even about that that's so much it's it's the it's the framing that you you add into your life and i think it's very easy to um let 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 certain uh, you know mis misconceptions of things um, uh, frame you in a way that it it didn't really need to be. So uh, going to your point again about it's you know it's um, the only thing that doesn't surprise you is that you know oh, sorry the, yeah that uh, surprises you is that it doesn't surprise you. Um, it's that uh, uh, the more people express themselves, uh, the more you get away from that kind of. Um, uh, generalized identities that 
a, a swept around in ter in, in you know uh, press on a you know de you know um, demographics and and all these things that sort of kind of are ways of kind of speaking to certain groups and that you know of course it's it's useful language in it for certain purposes but ultimately we're all made up of all kinds of histories and differences and the more we express this the more we'll show that we are this 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 difference you know um and i think the the people that i guess that are, are uh, kind of don't don't oppose or or consider the framing that is framing them um they're more likely to look like a, a stereotype or or fit into a more conventional pattern of a of a time you know of a period you know so likewise we look back at certain periods in history and we think oh the regular person in this situation behave like this this and this like some people even at the time that it's happening uh, will feel m more unified through um just i guess guess their response to life is more um unreactive you know they are the leaf blowing through you know and mm -hmm. and that's fine if that's if but i i just i yeah and, and maybe you know this is just f uh because i'm feel the way that i am um that feels like a bit of a uh you're like you're missing some you know uh mm -hmm. connectivity i feel you're you're missing out um because the best moments i've had in my life i think uh are the ones that um you've had to uh i don't know uh take a risk on some emotions and some some you know things like that I, I, it's like uh i think there's uh yeah i've been you know obviously <laughs> there's, a, there's been a mix of uh, uh responses i guess but there's um but there's been some rewards for that uh you know um behaving in that way and um so yes and that's why i would encourage others to because it's like um uh, it's made my life better so you know I would hope it makes others uh, you know like that so yeah I basically you know so uh, I would hope that even if, if someone is uh, resigned to uh, maybe uh, uh, to make money those kind of you know uh, uh, more predisposed sort of mannerisms and all the rest of it and um, I hope come you know other parts of the, the, the day in their lives that they would uh, um, find yeah other riv more natural rhythms um, to their own history and their own situation. Oh, I, I, not only Tom would I completely concur with you. I mean, I uh, again, and we can only do broad strokes, but hey, why not, man? We're creative writers. I mean, if you take the average, you know, he, Mr. 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 Jones, the average, and he's going out and he's leaving, you know, getting up at six o'clock in the morning and getting his train from suburbia into 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 the centre of you know, London, working in an accountant's office, all he's doing all day is numbers, numbers, numbers. You know, literally the the most completely that you know, every every stereotype that anybody can think of that Mr. Average, he wears a grey suit, all that. You know, he's the guy who goes home and he's going to have a train set, or he's going to have some weird. Every, it's in every single human being, and I think all all this. This is why I love the times we live in, because I think ne never like never before. It's becoming almost daily. Even since our last conversation, it reminds us back to where we started this conversation. Of, we've got more chances as humanity, especially in our part of the world, to break free and, and, and unleash that creativity. And that's only going to more and more happen. I mean, it's, it, you have a white elephant in the room that, that, you know, not many people want to speak about is artificial intelligence and how auto everything's going to become automated. And then you're going to have this huge big pile of human beings that are going to be left like, okay, what are you going to do? And then I think every one of them, instead of being pessimistic, I'm quite optimistic about mm -hmm. it because I do see that the, the Mr. Mr. Completely Grey Accountant, he has a hobby. Everybody has a hobby. Look at the, look at the, how many people are absolutely obsessed with craft shops and hobby channels and stuff. And that is that creativity. And this is one of the things people people do it. And and I say to me, I say to so many people that like, oh, I wish I was creative like you. I'm like, do you, do you, do you, do you out in your back garden making traction engines out of bits of metal? How creative do you want to be? It's, it's, this is the point. It's, like, it's making people realize that they have got that creativity that just because of the the way we're told that being creative is making a making art or making music, and that's not being creative. Being creative is like you said, that expression of yourself, yeah, shaping matter into something. 
it's the support of it as well so in that like uh those other jobs as well like that are, are more sort of um uh yeah responding to someone else's um dream you know like so you're hired in as a cog for for someone else's um world um but there is the there is the physical reward of money and therefore that goes towards you know um uh, kind of paying bills and stuff like that so i guess there's this this kind of survival idea that if we can come somehow feed the 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 response to making expression and if we can uh, the response to that can not only be obviously social support and all the rest of it but a kind of um that there's a that ties in with this uh, not survival in the worst kind of way but like in the kind of better sort of way in the sort of like that this is what life is you know this is what should be rewarded most in life um then that's when we'll see a you know a significant shift and likewise with your comment about ai it's like um likewise i i am theoretically optimistic about it like i think it's um well so it's anyway you could be optimistic but like but like as in um uh it, it, it the possibility of it is is fantastic because the idea that there's um all this uh you know this intelligence and this kind of technology that would then be looking after things that would then free up people to do other things and to use the their their sort of humanity in a in a, a more detailed and sort of thoughtful sense that's fantastic of course as with other technology as it has been used in the past in that um it's uh, the systems would need to change as well like uh you know um you get people in the workhouse using the machinery um but the guys up top are still you know and um, taking the, the you know it's it's still feudal it's stupid feudalistic um so it's the it, it's yeah then there, there needs to be you know some kind of um unionization and um communism or socialism or whatever that that will um basically mean that the the technology improvements do not crush the the workers basically um so that's the, that's the thing it needs to free free the people as opposed to um you know the other way around but as you say i'm yeah i'm optimistic you know it's uh yeah cuz those other um what's the word regimes they they burn out um in history you know peak sort of capitalistic sort of moments there's been <laughs> admittedly bloody revolutions but they you know they usually they don't end too well often yeah i mean my my, my response to all this Tom, this is why I, I like i said i mean you can only ever be positive in your own life but my general kind of why i'm optimistic in, in, it, in it i always look at it and i give two examples and i think how you know i don't know the cost of i don't know building a a, a hospital or a runway has only gone up you know the government I mean, they just spend more and more and more it but the iphones technologies were weren't regulated that went under the radar a bit they just go down in price and they get into the hands of a kid in africa or a kid in uganda and suddenly he's got more power in his hands than, than bill clinton had when he's sending people in the, into space and that to me is one of the great disruptive things that i think has gone unseen in our generation that people don't realize how much power they've got in their hands and i think it's really good because it's connecting us all and i think you're right i mean like i was trying to say before okay i think I think we're maybe at that point now and we're all trying to wrestle with this you know shouting in the playground thing but at the bottom of it all what we're all getting to this realization is it's like we're just waking up from real thinking all this that we're living in is only constructed by these things we've got in our heads yeah the whole money system the whole breaking it down for time and this is what i love about these new the, 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 the technology that's a, that we've got in our hands is giving solutions to go well do we need money? Yeah. Do we need, this is what I really see, that Tom. When I'm, I, I look a lot between, the, the, you know, look at anyone under 25. Look how they're approaching work. They're like, well, I don't want to work nine to five. I'm not going to get a pension. Why should I do this? Why? Should, and they're looking at all completely like radicals and like, no, we don't need any of this. And they've got the tools in their hands to go, okay, we can have our own currencies. We can do this. We can. And yeah. this is so disruptive that I think is that's what gives me optimism because I think all the times as you said before. When, when the powers and the talk, like the internet itself, it was given to the military then to sort of disseminate it amongst the people. Whereas what we've got now isn't coming from the top down, it's coming from the bottom up. And that's what you're starting to see everywhere. Yeah. People are like, no, this is it, we, we don't need anybody. And that is what gives me hope. Because then, it, as I can, this is almost the theme of this conversation. If we've got this, like, 
Jesus Christ, man. I mean, imagine 30, 40 years ago, let alone 60 years ago, for a grandparent to say, man, if you, you would have had a tool that could have gone. Imagine George Orwell. I could have gone to George Orwell in 1956 and said, hey, look, man, I've got a tool that's going to be able to do this. He would have absolutely seen the nightmare scenario, but he would have bitten your hand off for it and said, hey, look, look the masses can yeah. do that. But then it's this is what I'm saying. It's going to come down to us of what we do with this tool, which breaks down to all... It's going to always breaks down to the people who are creative and the ones who are the innovators. They generally, that's where the herd follows. They, they yeah. you know, one or two people start making hip hop in the in the in the ghettos in New York. Ten years later, every white kid's walking around with his cap backwards. And that's yeah. the way of the world. It's uh, yes, uh, the uh, it's partly the the strength of the idea, and but um, but of course, I think that, uh, also there's. Um, uh, because of the the prejudice and various sort of segregations, there is also a bit of um, uh, brute force necessity about certain ideas as well. Um, and I think, like, uh, yeah, and you mentioned like the the hip hop things, like uh, there was a sort of commercial idea involved. I mean, obviously, there's a political response, but there, then there was also the marrying of it with uh, with clothing and bits and pieces like that, which sort of uh, you know led to its um, you know uh, proliferation. Um, but uh, but yes, there are ways. There are ways, and um, I think you know. And and for all you know, the issues with Facebook and things like this, it's like I mean, those guys. I mean, that it's uh, again. You look at the conception of it, it's various. You know, the, the other people doing similar things. All and it just takes one little you know click to rise up, and it sort of just becomes you know everywhere. But um, but yes, it's um, it has empowered. Of people, and I think we've seen it, and you know, um, obviously it can say in the recent elections, um, but uh, I mean, creatively as well, it's 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 a, 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 a democratic response. The problem then becomes um, uh, democracy overtakes. Uh, well, I mean, not doesn't overtake, but it's sort of um, it, it, as you say, it, it's it's the authenticity of the individual to themselves whilst participating in that democracy and also um, a fairness to that individual of them being given the uh, a fair amount of knowledge and information that's true as well so it, it is it is a slightly two-way two-way thing but it's um, but no I, I agree in it's like uh, it can only be a good thing this um, uh, ways to share and 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 uh, ex you know um, you know communicate you know what you make um so so that's good um and you say you started construction on on your is that right the the actual modeling of, of the program is it like uh, yeah exactly i mean tom is i mean it's, it's, a, it's again it's, i think it kind of really speaks about what we're doing i mean even building this i mean I, i've gone into this and everybody kind of knows i'm not saying anything else i i i'm not a coder by any sense but it's like looking at it and building this creative process and the stage i'm at now and i always i think if you were right you know what it is you kind of like you've done your first draft of the book you kind of done the edit of the book and then you kind of you've got to hand that across to people who are going to go right okay now we have a look at it and let me put and then it say they got to print it out fold it up do all that kind of stuff which at times honestly dude i get really frustrated because i'm like i can see it all in my head and then you get people going oh yeah but i, I know you can see it and i'm like oh how about oh. and then you get really frustrated because you're like why can't you see what i'm saying i'll make it as simple as possible but that's that's all part of this well, creative process yeah with the process we're talking about but what i think is really encouraging someone I, and I, I think this plays into what you're sort of saying is that not only have, have we got the ability like you just said to share and i think one of the things that i think really needs to be reminded upon then is that okay people may be putting tracks out or putting material out and, and they may think oh it's oh i'm not getting a hundred thousand views or whatever but you don't know you don't know that your comp that that piece of music is just not inspiring one kid who had a really bad day in but exactly, exactly it's like it's sort of what, what you're saying though isn't it it's sort of like that's the problem in that we've been taught that that is the value you know the a hundred thousand views or whatever mm. it's like um somewhere along the line that's just become an accepted sort of you know um now you know, it's like um uh and it's 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 not um you know the, the yeah the the important moments well again speaking personally it's like those conversations or the, those comments that people have come to us about certain things you know that you've made or, or whatever and you've connected over some kind of expression where you know two people go 
we, we understand that that thing that we couldn't talk about before or whatever or that as you say getting the things outside of your head so you can share with someone and go right we're actually talking about the same thing i mean that kind of satisfaction of communication that that um yeah that connection is uh well it's 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 worth you know um it's worth uh well it, it's there's no equivalent um casual views um or uh, disconnected views um that would be worth that um, yeah and i think the thing is something that i'm saying it's always been my kind of drive behind building i mean you just you know i mentioned in 99 i mean to drive behind it's always been it's kind of like the cat side moment i think how is it that we got to 2016 and okay, we do live in a world of views, and I, I can even understand that. Hey, if you put a hey, let's, let's flip this around. Let's let's flip this whole conversation around. You know, you, you put a running Chelsea track out, and you know, irreversible, and it goes absolutely viral, and bang, a hundred thousand people are doing for that. Now, why? That's that's a good sign. That's a good sign. Yes, Tom. It means it yeah. But I'm trying to say, but equally, if you have done that shouldn't you be rewarded for that and i'm not talking about wealth and money this is i think one of the things that i've been mean, my my mantra my drive behind n99 is to get people away from it's not about don't put your thoughts and your passion into money or to status in wealth or housing think about it as hey all i want to know personally if, if tom if you're going to put a track out for instance you put you know irreversible out oh good i can reward you with something then you've got the ability to swap that for if you want to cash you can swap that for time you can swap that for, and this is the real disruptive element of what i'm the mean the mantra behind it of getting people away from this idea that all i want to know as a creative person as, as someone who supports what you do is i might know that tom tom's going to be all right for the next six months have you got a roof over your head have you got the ability to create because if you have then you're going to create if yeah. I, I know personally if you're if you're going to go down to your next adventure and you're having to worry about your rent and then you got to go and do more work it's going to take away from that time you you're being creative which is what i yeah. want so i think this is a simple to me that little cat's eye moment of looking and thinking why hasn't this done so far why are people got the demons getting twenty thousand views on youtube and not getting any rewards that to me is ridiculous it should be a direct you know one-to-one -one, and that's to me, I can't believe we're in 2016 and this hasn't been done. So that that's my overview of N99. Dude. So that's always keeps me driving on and on and on. It's it maybe a difficult task and I may have, you know, but hey, it's it's like you said, that whole all creative process, it's a step by step by step. Because to me, the, it's a simple thing that should have been done a long time ago. Yeah, it's the idea is, yes, it's, it's um, uh, if someone chooses to off, if, if not choose to, but like, someone feels compelled to offer something positive then uh, whatever uh, you know wherever that is in society um, that should be um, yeah there should be a way of perpetuating that and um, uh, I, I see lots of friends sadly doing lots of hard work and making lots of good stuff that is not um, and it's, it's not even it's not even about subjectivity or, or whatever it's like this is uh, yeah, this is expression. This is this is work. This is talent. This is skill, and um, yeah, and and uh, it, it's yeah, it it should it should be looked after. Uh, it's uh, it's it's why we've got the luxury of the world we live in and the things we can enjoy now. Um, you know, uh, yeah, we we want this uh, to go forward to reflect the world that we move into. Um, Otherwise, we'll be looking back, you know, and it's like, um, uh, you know, that's we need, we need, we need that. Um, so any any technology that, um, yeah, rewards that, uh, yeah, is is going to going to help. Well, Tom, look, I mean, I, I said to you before, and I'm I'm kind of. Um... I've got time constraints to like because I've, oh, mm -hmm. I've got to jump, I've got to jump into a podcast. No, but I've got a few minutes, so I, before we do, because I'm I'm always aware that like we go off on these long rift to chats, and I'm like, oh, time time's still marching on between our chats. But and I wanted to sort of focus on a few things, so I'm trying to sort of be quite disciplined on this element. So, sure. kind of like um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was there's, there's two things really. Really, what are your plans really with um, running Chelsea and Nijinsky Asylum? Because I, I, I see Nijinsky Asylum, and I, again, and I know it's not directly overly, you know, you're, it's completely in your control, but it's obviously going, I mean, if people go to the site now, it's kind of almost like an under a, a reconstruction site. I love what you're doing, man. I love the little rooms and stuff like that. So please, and give me kind of like what, what you plan to do with that and what's the sort of, your, your kind of roadmap for the next sort of six months with Nijinsky Asylum? So my roadmap, um, 
uh, two things, Nijinsky's Asylum and um, a, a tarot set, basically, are the, the things I'm going to be working on um, next. And they're both sort of more to do with um, using music as or certain riffs and certain motifs as kind of reusable bits of music. So not to be necessarily listened to as a song, but more to be reorganized by the listener in a way that they can play with as an end result. So um, the separate rooms, um, they are going to be going to be described sonically. So I'm going to write music that um, fills out the rooms. And then there might be bits of music which um, um, describe certain events that happen in those rooms. And then you could play that event music uh, in a different room and you can combine you know th these these things so it's it's a kind of it's a game it's basically it's 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 like a a way of playing with um with a, within a within a building um uh, I, i've i've talked sort of you know uh, maybe slightly um flippantly um but i was a big um zork nemesis fan when i was younger and like uh so there's these kind of point and click adventures and all those kind of thing and i think they've had a, a deeper impact than i you know um thought and uh so basically uh I, i'm less interested in sort of songs just to be at the moment you know to be listened to and more to create a sort of set of sounds and sort of you know um experiences that people can get the materials and at home mess around with and then likewise the 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 interest in the tarot cards again 78 minute-esque uh, amounts of music that you can put into your you know uh, whatever um, music player hit randomize and it's like you're being given a, a tarot reading um, but in sound so you, rather than seeing the pictures in front of you you know maybe we might be able to get an app together and you know put the, the music with an app but like um, just so that you you hear the the unfolding of a tarot sequence as opposed to um, seeing it so they're the, the two things that I'm working on at the moment. Well, that sounds, um, again, I mean, this is something, again, we can, I, I, one of the essences I, like, I love about particularly working in a decentralized network and what we're building is, is that sense, is, is exactly what you spoke about, Tom. It's the idea that we can evolve and organically add things on and stuff like that. So I think this is, long and short, what I'm trying to say is that we'll have a conversation in private. <laughs> right, okay. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just trying to be, I'm dancing around the steps here, trying to be poetic, but basically, yeah. Um, yeah. Now, before we, we, you know, we were discussing about, you know, what tracks we were going to end this on. And sure, yes, yeah. sorry, yes. Yeah. So no, 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 dude, you, you sent me a track across, and I, yeah. I really want to kind of, um, before, well, I'm, while I'm queuing this up and stuff, mm -hmm. I, I, maybe talk me through, um, you know, why particularly you chose this track, the sort of the story behind it and stuff like that. But, but before I do, because obviously bearing in mind, I'm going to have to sort of wrap this track up, which means why Mike goes. Um, I want to say, Tom, it's been absolutely you know, just a pleasure tonight. Let to me talk with you again, Tim. To catch up again. And, 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 and the thing is, Tom, every time I kind of worry from the our conversations, I'm always left with thinking, right, I'm left with more questions and I kind of feel like I want to carry it on. So we, we, we should, we, we should ne next time we shouldn't make this uh, in a year. We should do it sort of like within weeks rather than... <laughs> than, than, than I'm, we shall. I'm, I'm sure, yes, I'm sure we can get something together together sooner this time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. next time I speak to you, Tom, you can be right in the heart of uh, the, uh, the big smoke, dude. <laughs> It'll be like, yeah, background noise the whole time time yeah. those are people walking around talking like me dude yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like i say it's been an absolute um well absolutely insightful one tonight so and um absolutely as ever like i say i mean i'll say to people well where, where can people just before we, you know you tell me about the track where can people reach out to you to find out because i know you sort of check your change your sort of um yeah, you know where, where can like reach out to you. So, so where can people particularly find you if they want to reach out to you so um yeah, I guess I mean the Twitter at T Hollingworth. You know that that that's that's uh, you know if they want to directly get in contact with me. Um, the the song type you know music that I've had up before is now at the Eternal Garden site, which uh, is is a bland title, but the the point of it is that it's there, and you know people can go and have a, a listen and enjoy that. And and the Jinsky's Asylum, if people put that in, that will lead them to the the various sites for the, so that's for the the room type stuff um the tarot stuff will have to wait that's going to come later on but um yeah so the Nijinsky's asylum for the kind of room 
you know noises and bits and pieces they'll go up there but um for anything else i'm doing yet yeah, t hollingworth was yeah they can get, get in touch with us that way well perfect like i said tom i, I we're, we're finished with the track so like i said i mean just tell me just give us a rundown about it and we'll, we'll i queue it up and then like sure. i said it's been an absolute pleasure anyway but can you just do tell me about the track you're going to play out with okay just a yeah a couple of words it's like um so um uh I, I had some wav files left over from an album i made in 2010 um as the running chelsea and the album's called the moonstruck confederate and um uh, kindly um three different people have done uh some remixes for a, a little little ep um one of them was tim from outside your house uh, another guy was called sim who's also known as Aiko. and the one you're about to hear is by um a guy called david young from a band called what we call progress uh, and uh and uh, yes, so I thought we'll give his one a, a look tonight. <laughs> Thank you. 
house to what sound she liked to what I am to what I want to work. And she said, she said, she said, she said.